Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to be talking through some NBA player props I like over on Prize Picks for today's slate on Friday, November the 8th. Uh, we got a big Friday night slate as per usual. I think we got 12 games tonight. Uh, no, 13 games on the slate for Friday night. So almost every team's playing. There's only four teams that aren't playing tonight. So we got a really big slate, guys. Giving you some early plays I do like for this slate. Making this video on Thursday night. So I'm recording this video the night before. But we still have a lot of props up. There's already props up for seven of the 13 games. So like over half the games already, you know, we've got props for. And I've got four plays, uh, four early plays that I do like for these Friday games that we're going to break down in this video. So before we talk through these plays, as always, if you guys do enjoy these prize picks videos, if they do help you out, make sure to hit that like button down below, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. And also, if you guys are new to prize picks, and if you don't have a prize picks account, be sure to sign up, use promo code NOAH, and when you sign up for prize picks with my promo code and place your first lineup, you'll get $50 in promo funds instantly added to your account. So you sign up, make a deposit, let's say you only want to deposit $10, which I think is the minimum. You put in $10, prize picks, they'll give you $50 in promo funds once you place your first lineup and you know, $5 is the minimum you have to play. So you play a $5 lineup, even if you win or lose that lineup, Prospects is going to give you $50 that you can use to play additional lineups, and any money you win off those is credit that you can choose you know, to withdraw if you want to do so. But make sure you guys are signed up for Prospects, and again, use that promo code NOAH when you do sign up. Uh, and also, I do want to give a quick shout out to Sleeper. We did promote Sleeper in our last video because Sleeper is doing a really cool promo right now, as you can see on the screen. Sleeper is giving you a deposit match up to $1,500. So if you are someone that does have a larger bankroll, if you um, have more money to put in. I know not everyone has a lot of money to put into this, and I totally understand. But if you are someone that does have the money, the funds to deposit, uh, you know, make a big deposit, Sleeper is giving you a deposit bonus up to $1,500. So if you want to put in $1,500, Sleeper is going to give you an additional $1,500 to play with. Now, this is for a limited time only. It's not going to last forever. But for those of you that have wanted to get over to Sleeper, if you wanted to try them out, and if you want to put in a big deposit, they're going to give you a deposit match up to $1,500 when you use promo code NOAH. So make sure to check them out, guys. Download the Sleeper app. Use that code. Get your deposit bonus. Um, and for those of you that don't know what Sleeper is, they're a DFS pick'em app, very, uh, very similar to Prize Picks, where you're just picking more or less on player projections. You build out your entry. You can't make up to an eight-pick entry on Sleeper. You can mix and match sports, and you can win up to 100x your money. So if you guys want to check them out, again, sign up. Use that code NOAH. Get your first deposit matched up to $1,500 for a limited time. Definitely uh, go check out Sleeper if you guys have not yet. But we got four prize picks plays to talk about for this NBA slate on Friday. Now, I do want to recap our plays from our last video. I did not make an NBA video for Thursday. There were only three games. I uh, just figured it was you know, probably a good day to not make a video for. We did do a video for Thursday Night Football. Unfortunately, couldn't get seven targets from Zay Flowers. He finished with six targets, which is what we needed to cash our Thursday Night Football entry. Um, super frustrating because Zay Flowers had a, he got a play or he got a reception and, and a target, but then it got called back for a penalty. So he should have had seven targets, but the, the penalty kind of took a reception or a target away from him, which was very, very annoying. Uh, we paired that with Chase Brown over receptions, which was swept free. Chase Brown had like nine receptions on Thursday night. But looking at our place from our last video on Wednesday, Wednesday was a really frustrating day. We gave out three picks Wednesday. One of them was a Jalen Duran over, which was a reboot because Jalen Duran only played seven minutes, got injured, didn't return for the rest of the game. So prize picks rebooted us on Jalen Duran. We took a Zion under, which was looking great. Zion had, we took him under uh, 40 PRA. He had, he had 10 PRA at halftime. He got injured right before halftime, went to the locker room, didn't even think he was going to return, got a report that Zion was going to return and play the second half. And this motherfucker goes out there and puts up 33 PRA in the second half. And just like, he was going nuts. They couldn't stop him. Cleveland couldn't stop him. I don't know what the what the Pelicans gave him at halftime, but whatever they gave him, they gave him some special juice because he came out in the second half and was dominating Cleveland. Um, so that Zion under, unfortunately, did not hit. Um, I felt really good about that play, especially after, you know, I think his line actually got bumped down to like 37 and a half before tip-off. So we got some really good value getting his under 40 PRA, and you know, he went out there and had a monster second half. It is what it is. We missed our plays from Wednesday. We'll try and get back at it, though, for this Friday slate, guys. we got four picks for Friday. Let's break them down. So the play that I'm liking, first play I'm liking is going to be a PRA prop, and I'm liking Trey Young for more than 38.5 PRA. So 
Trey Young so far this season has had a really, really big role, and we kind of all expected this going into the season. No DeJounte Murray, obviously DeJounte Murray no longer on the team. Without DeJounte Murray, the offense really runs through Trey Young. Trey Young's usage rate this season is over 29%, which leads the team, not surprising. Trey's had the ball in his hands a ton. He's averaging the second most potential assists per game in the NBA, 19.1 per game. Only Nikola Jokic is averaging more potential assists per game than Trey Young this season. So not only is Trey getting a bunch of usage, he's also doing a bunch of facilitating. He's also been rebounding a little bit too, which is something we typically don't see from Trey Young. But so far the season, Trey Young is averaging over four and a half rebounds per game. He's had at least four rebounds in, I believe, seven out of nine games this season. Um, yeah, seven out of nine, uh, seven out of nine games this season, Trey has had at least four rebounds, which again, that's not something we typically see from Trey. He's never been a guy that really gets many rebounds, but he's been rebounding the ball a little bit more this year. The scoring obviously is going to be there because he's just going to have, you know, the offense is going to run through Trey and the assist opportunities are going to be there too, because he's going to be the guy doing a lot of the facilitating. And if you look at Trey so far this season, he's gone over this line in six out of their nine games. One of the games he went under, he had 35 P, uh, He had 35 PRA against the Wizards. He had 14 points, 8 rebounds, 13 assists. He did go under, but he shot 2 for 15 from the field, 2 for 10 from 3. So one of the games he went under, he had a horrible shooting game. And then the other two games he went under were against OKC and Boston, two of the best defenses in the, uh, in the NBA, if not the best, the two best defenses in the NBA, OKC and Boston. So we can kind of see, you know, Trey Young, when he gets tough matchups, he can struggle. Obviously, you know, shooting-wise, there's going to be nights where he shoots the ball poorly. But typically, you know, the role is going to be amazing for him. He's going to have the ball in his hands so much. The usage is going to be so good. And the matchup here against the Pistons should be really favorable. The Pistons have historically been a good matchup for guards. Their, their, their defense, I believe, this season has improved a little bit. Like, if you look at last season, the Pistons, in terms of uh, defensive rating, I want to say they did rank towards the bottom of the league last season. Let's see. The Pistons in defensive rating ranked, yeah, 25th last season. Now, so far this season, the Pistons rank 12th in defensive rating. So they have been improving defensively. Um, but again, it's a, you know, it's a small sample. We haven't played a ton of games yet. I don't even think, you know, we haven't even played like 10 games yet. Maybe as the season progresses, the Pistons will get worse defensively. They've been a little bit better this year. But I still think overall, this is a pretty good matchup for Trey. Love the role that he's had this year. Love the usage, the shot attempts, the assist opportunities, and the, the increased rebounding numbers, too, from Trey has been a, a good surprise as well. So I do like him for more than 30.5 PRA in this matchup. It's a matchup he's historically had a lot of success in. If you want to factor that in, for what it's worth, his last five games against the Pistons, Trey has had uh, 44, 50, 41, 45, and 50 PRA. So he's over this line in all of his last five games versus Detroit. Really good matchup here for Trey. Like him for more than 38 and a half PRA. Next prop I like going to be an assist prop, and I'm liking Tyrese Halliburton for more than eight and a half assists. So Tyrese Halliburton started off the season with really, really low assist numbers, which was not something that really anyone expected. Last season, Tyrese Halliburton was I believe led the league in potential assists per game. He was like, I think he led the league in assists per game too. I want to actually take a look at that just to confirm. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton was second in the league last season, 17.8 assists, uh, potential assists per game, led the league with 10.9 assists per game. So, I mean, this assist line is two full assists lower than his season average from last season. And I think part of that is just due to the fact that he started off the season with really low assist numbers. So he had just four assists against Detroit, five against the Knicks, two against the Sixers. But as of late, we started to see the assist numbers get back to normal for Tyrese Halliburton. And you can just look at his last five games, 10 against Orlando, 12 against Boston, 11 against uh, the Pelicans, 12 against Dallas. Last game against Orlando, he did only have four assists, but I want to say he still had a decent amount of potentials. Like he still had 16 potential assists last game. So Tyrese Halliburton had 12 missed assists just, you know, from teammates missing shots. Obviously, that is very, very unlucky. Typically, if a guy gets 16 potential assists, they're going to get like seven or eight assists on average, and Halliburton only had four last game. You just can't expect that to happen every game. And, you know, the last five games, obviously Halliburton's over this line in four out of his last five. Over that stretch, he's averaging 18.4 potential assists per game. So we're starting to see Halliburton do a lot more facilitating. We're starting to see the potential assist numbers come, go back up for him. And again, this was a guy that led 
the entire league in assists per game last year, was second in the league in potential assists per game. Really like the matchup here against Charlotte. This is a game that I think does have a good chance to be really high scoring. Charlotte with LaMelo ball healthy, they're a team that likes to play fast. Now, Charlotte in terms of pace so far this season, they haven't been playing as fast, but historically they've been a team that plays relatively fast, especially when LaMelo is healthy. And we know the Pacers love to fly up and down the court. The Pacers pretty sure led the league or they were second in the league in pace last year. I think they're top 10 in, in pace this season so far. This is a game that I think does have a lot of potential to be high scoring. I think this is a game that you, know, you could see a lot of you know, just possessions, a lot of back and forth scoring. And those are the type of games that you want to target Tyrese Halliburton in, especially when you're taking an over on his assist prop. He can get those assists easily in these type of games that are fast paced, where there's going to be a lot of possessions. And this is also a matchup that Halliburton has had a lot of success in, if you want to factor that in. For what it's worth, in his last five games, or excuse me, last six games against Charlotte, which were all with the Pacers, last six games with Charlotte or with the Pacers versus Charlotte, Halliburton has had 11, 13, 12, 13, 4, and 12 assists. In the game that he had four assists, he only played 20 minutes. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure why he played 20 minutes. Maybe, maybe blowout, maybe foul trouble, injury, don't know, but. He's had at least 11 assists in five out of his last six games against the Hornets. Love this spot for Halliburton. Love to see the assist, the potential assists come back up. And in a fast-paced game like this, you know, versus, you know, with two teams that typically are, you know, have not been great defensively, I think we got a chance to see a lot of points scored in this Pacers Hornets game. And you know, in those type of game scripts, those type of scenarios, those are the type of spots where Halliburton typically is able to get and, and rack up a lot of assists. So. Like that is our second prop for Friday. And then the next prop I like going to be a rebounds prop. We're going to take a look at two rebounds props. So the first one that I'm liking is going to be Miles Turner for less than nine and a half rebounds. So I think we're getting a little bit of an inflated rebounds line on Miles Turner today. For one, due to the matchup, Charlotte, they've historically been a, you know, a bad rebounding team. We have seen centers have a lot of success rebounding against Charlotte. And also last two games, Miles Turner has seen improved rebounding numbers 11 and 10 rebounds. But throughout his career, Miles Turner has never really been an aggressive rebounding center. He has averaged seven and a half rebounds per game or less in every season of his career. So far this season, he's averaging 7.1 rebounds per game. So he's never been a guy that really is like, he's never been a double-double guy because he doesn't get 10 rebounds or more very often. I know he's gotten 10 rebounds in back-to-back -back games, but I think this line's a little bit inflated. He, you know, I know the matchup's good as well, but like you look at Miles Turner this season in terms of rebound chances, he's still only averaging 14.6 rebound chances per game, which is not a lot when you need a guy to get 10 rebounds. You want them to have like 17, 18 rebound chances if they're going to need to get 10 rebounds. And Turner's only averaging 14.6 rebound chances per game this season. Last season, Turner averaged 12.9 rebound chances per game. So his rebound chances have been a little bit up this season compared to last season. Part of that could be due to him playing more minutes. Without Isaiah Jackson, they've really been playing Turner more minutes, which is something we haven't seen in the past. Last season, Turner only averaged 27 minutes per game. So far this season, he's averaging, uh, he's averaging 31.7 minutes per game. And I think, again, that is probably due to Isaiah Jackson being out who's you know, their backup center. With Isaiah Jackson out, they just don't really have any other backup bigs they feel confident giving minutes to. So Miles Turner, he'll probably play over 30 minutes once again. But even if he plays 30 minutes, it's not a guarantee that he grabs 10 rebounds. I mean, he played 36 minutes in their season opener against Detroit and had nine rebounds. He played 37 minutes against the Sixers and had four rebounds. I like betting against Miles Turner here. Again, he is not a guy that has really has, has historically been a great rebounder. I mean, he's typically a guy that averages like seven, six, seven rebounds per game. I feel like this line's a little bit inflated because of the last two games, also because of the matchup. Maybe he'll go out there and dominate on the boards, but there's other guys on this Hornets or on this uh, Pacers team that can rebound. Pascal Siakam can rebound really well. Benedict Matherin's been playing more minutes lately, and he's a really good rebounder. So there's guys on this team that can rebound. You know, it's not like Turner's going to be out there just grabbing every single board. And if he does, so what? But it is what it is. I like this under quite a bit. Less than nine and a half rebounds for Miles Turner will be our third play for Friday. And then the fourth and final play I like is another uh, under on rebounds. And I'm liking, well... I think it just got taken off the board, so that's really annoying. Yeah, it was gonna be it was gonna be Peyton Pritchard less than three and a half rebounds, and it looks like the the prospects took that off the board. So 
guess we're not going to play that. Um, and I don't, I don't really want to play any other Pritchard props. So I guess we got three picks for today. We were going to have four. One of them was going to be Pritchard under three and a half rebounds. If Prospects adds that back to the board, which I doubt they will, you could take it. I do like that. Or if you want to take it on a sports book, depending on what the odds are, uh, Pritchard under three and a half rebounds, I kind of like. Let's see what, I want to see what DraftKings has that, has the odds on that, if they have odds for that up. Um, because that might be that might be why it got taken down. If the if the sports book odds are favoring the under heavily, that could be why they took that down. Let's see. So DraftKings for Pritchard rebounds. Yeah, they don't have a lineup for Pritchard rebounds, but yeah, if you can get that Pritchard under three and a half rebounds and it's not too juiced, uh, I do like that. But these will be our three props, I guess. Um, I was gonna have four. One of them got taken off the board. Is it is what it is. We'll just roll with these three. So Trey Young more than 38 and a half PRA. Tyrese Halliburton, more than 8.5 assists. Miles Turner, less than 9.5 rebounds. So three props for Friday, guys. Hopefully we can hit all three of these plays. We can make some money on this slate, as always. I do appreciate you guys watching these Prospects videos and, as always, supporting the Prospects content. Make sure you hit that like button down below. If you did enjoy, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well. And, again, if you guys are new to Prospects and if you don't have a Prospects account, be sure to sign up. Use promo code NOAA uh, when you sign up for Prospects with my promo code and place your first lineup. You'll get $50 in promo funds instantly added to your account. So be sure to go check out Prospects if you guys have not yet. But good luck tonight, guys. Thanks for watching as always. Enjoy your Friday night. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you guys in the next video.